Hi there, this is Joy from Joyously Handmade again. Um, I thought I would do another tutorial for us today. And this time I think, last time because we did um, handmade bezels, excuse my cold, I think this time I'm going to try and do some handmade bales. And this is an experiment on my part, of course, fly by the seat of your pants. So, I have kind of a variety of things I think I might use. I have my trusty roller, which I need to wipe off. I have, of course, my blade. And I have my stylus. I have just kind of a tool to help me blend things if I need it. And of course, I can't go anywhere without my trusty X-Acto knife. I also have some texture sheets, just a variety of things in case I want to put a pattern on my bale. Same uh, idea with the stamp. And I have just a piece that you use in scrapbooking and glue down. And I've been using it for mica shifts and stuff, but I thought it might make a nice little pattern on the bale as well. So I've got that. I have some canes in case I thought it might be a nice idea to match. With these, I kind of brought that specifically because I made some things with this kind of a pattern the other day. And uh, I thought it would be kind of funky to have a bale that matches. So I might put a few of this type of thing. Actually, that one doesn't match. Of this type of thing on this, just as a bit of a, a pattern on the bale. I also have some flower canes that I made. Again, just kind of uh, coming up with ideas of things that I'm working on right now and in the oven right now are some um, faux stones with some of these flower canes on it. I thought I might make a bale to match that. I have some little skinny tube beads that I thought might be kind of fancy. And I have my clay. So of course I've preconditioned some clay and I've just got the metallic pearl green there and turquoise and that's a pearl it's a pearl one I'm not sure if it's a pearl turquoise it's a little darker than the the regular turquoise but it's quite pretty I've got some of the copper and this is kind of uh, pieces left over from some jelly roll that I had done in browns for my face cane and I kind of twisted them up and put them through so they look almost like a wood grain. So I thought that would make kind of a neat bale as well. So this is kind of what I'm working with at the moment. And I think I'm going to start with this one because I know the kind of what I'd like to do. I want to match, match my pendant. So the main thing I'm thinking of here is that really all a bale has to do is have a loop that goes over the cord or the chain and have a hole in the bottom, obviously, to put your fitting from the pendant to the bale. So it should be fairly easy. You should be able to do almost any kind of a shape or pattern or whatever, as long as it has those two elements in it. So really, what I thought I would do first is just kind of add my... I'm going to get a general shape going here. And then I'm going to add some of my little canes and then I'm going to roll it over something to give it the shape I want so that the cord can go through it. <sighs> I wish I could get rid of this cold. It's driving me batty. So I figure I can do this two different ways. For the most part, it's going to get probably rolled over something like this just to make the shape I want. So we can do that first and then cut our shape or we can kind of do everything we want to the piece and then roll it at the end and see where we are. I think because I need to put the canes on and roll it, like flatten it, I'm going to do this part first. So I'm just going to slice off some bits of my little bullseye cane that I've got. And it was um, like a Skinner Blend bullseye cane. And I'm just going to kind of randomly set those on there because that's what I did with the pendant. I think actually I used up all of the one that had the white on the outside. So this isn't going to quite match, but I've got two of the three that were on that bunch of stuff I made. I made a few different things like this as well. 
and that was obviously these the canes but on a background piece it was blended I saw a really cool tutorial the other day about um, taking your beads and then kind of getting this this shape kind of like a yo-yo shape kind of thicker in the center and they were just kind of pressing their beads in a circular motion with a flat like an acrylic block and the center would twist and get all sorts of cool patterns so I was experimenting with that the other day anyways so I'm just going to stick a few of these on there I'm not going to be real picky about it because some of it's going to get cut away anyways in order to get the bale shape. Alright, that's good enough. And of course we want it to be flush or flat. So I'm just going to give that a little bit of a roll. I don't mind if you can still feel the texture. I just don't want to have thick edges. Now what I'm thinking is this end and this end have to have the hole for the finding. So the center is going to be full width probably. And this part is going to be narrowed down in order to have the hole for the finding. I'm just trying to figure out how I want to do that. And I could just cut it. I could leave it flat, really. I could curve it. Oops, that would be the wrong way. It would have to be like this. Which I might do, because that's kind of a curved. But yeah, that's what I'll do. So I'm just going to curve my blade. I'm just going to turn it, sorry. So I can kind of try to get it evenish. And I'm going to do that. And turn it the other way. And I'm going to do that. Here we go. This is what I end up with. Not quite even on that side. That side's a little skinnier than this side. There we go. There we go. Now I want to have a nice kind of shape at the end. I don't want it to just be blunt. So, what I might do is use a cutter. I'm not pushing down all the way really because I don't want to accidentally mark something. I just want to give myself a line to follow. And then I can cut it or scrape it away with my other tools. So this is what we've got. Kind of plain looking, but I think that the pattern is what's going to make it a little extra funky, not necessarily the shape. So at this point, I have to make sure, I'm just going to smooth my edges over maybe, since it is just a little on the rough side. And put my, this is kind of very handy because it's a nice big round bale kind of shape. So I'm just folding it over, like so, and I'm tapping down the bottom so the two pieces are joined. When I take this out, it's going to end up with a nice tube to put my cord or whatever through. And I just kind of want to add a little bit more shape to it, so I'm just going to push in with my fingers to narrow down that end piece. It was a little bit too plain for my liking, I don't know. So I'm pushing down here and here, just kind of at the rounded part of my nail to give it some shape. So the back's going to look like that. And at this point, all I really need is a hole to put my finding through. like so. I'm going to lift that off my glass and I'm just going to tidy up the edge. 
that I've got when I join the two pieces together. I don't necessarily want it to have a seam showing. So I'm just going to blend that a little bit with my tool. Tap it with my finger to make sure my shape is still right. And make sure my hole is still nice. And I always end up trying to go through back to front and front to back to make sure because sometimes I bake it and I get it out of the oven and it's a little bit too um, small in the back because the point always usually goes from front to back and then it's hard to get the finding through so I've learned my lesson. So there's our handmade bale and it's going to hang over top of this. Now this was blended with a skitter blend so it's a little bit paler at one end than on the other. I had kind of uh, the pearl green, the lime green and pink all together but that's going to hang like that, and I think that's going to be pretty funky. So there's one, one down. The next thing I think I'm going to do is, uh, I love these little bits and pieces, it always comes out so fun. I'll play with that later though. This is how my video ended up so long last time I got playing. Now I want to do something with the one that looks like a wood grain. And I think it's very pretty. And I think it can be fairly plain. And I think I'm going to use it for some of my bamboo-ish. I don't have any showing or not. I did a couple that I made kind of a fake wood. And then I joined it with some... I've got a cherry blossom texture sheet. So I did the magenta pearl in the cherry blossom texture sheet. And I did some wood grain colors that look kind of like bamboo. And I put the two together in... I haven't quite been sure what to do with them since then. So I'm going to make something, I think, out of this for it. And here's my thought. If you've ever used those crescent roll things from Pillsbury, right, and you just kind of take a big, long triangular shape and you roll it. It wasn't quite... Enough. And you roll it from the thick end to the thin end, and what you end up with is something that looks like a crescent roll. So my thought on this one is that I'm going to roll like so. Nope, that's not going to work. I should start from the skinny end. Or should I? The idea that I want to have here is kind of like so. I'm not sure if I like having these sticking out though. So I need, excuse me, a paintbrush. To make sure I still have my hole all the way through, I'm just going to do this around a paintbrush. And I've got my roll. My roll looks nice. It's these little sticking out ends I don't like. So I'm just going to pull them forward and attach them, like so. And I'm going to turn my paintbrush to make sure I'm not stuck in there. So this is what I've got. Now it could go this way, or it could go that way. But I like the wood grain part. And I like the fact that it's just very organic looking. I'm just going to make sure my little pieces I stuck on are joined. I like the crescent roll kind of look of it. <laughs> kind of like a little branch or a twig, something along that line. And again, I just need to add a hole. And I'm going to do it from the front and the back. I'm going to slide my paintbrush out of the center. I could bake it with that in there, but I tend to find things stick because they shrink a little bit, I think, when they're baked. So I've got my hole going all the way through for my cord, and I've got my little hole at the bottom for my finding. I just need to make sure when I bake it that I stick it flat so that it doesn't curl up or lose its shape. So there's my little bale for that one.
Now, the copper one, I kind of like the idea of putting some of these tube things, tube beads, and embedding them in the copper to make it kind of fancy. And but I also like the idea of using this to push into it to make um, a nice pattern in it so that it looks kind of like a metal piece that's been embossed. I'm not sure if I could actually manage to incorporate the two or not. So I'm not sure which thing I want to do. I'm going to try it and see. So you can put a release agent on this and most of the time I just use a paintbrush with a bit of water on it. But today I'm not going to worry about that too much because my water's downstairs. And being the person that I am, I'm too lazy to go get it. So I'm just going to break a nail trying to get this out of there. That's really in there. There. Ha! Okay. And it didn't work very well after all. Actually, it's kind of cool. So as you can see, this part, the top and the bottom, came out really nice. And the center didn't. I guess it must be quite a bit shallower there. But in the end, I think that that's going to allow me to maybe add these. Gives me a little bit of a pattern in the center to follow. And I'm going to follow it, so that worked out pretty well. What I'm going to do is just lay, I said I like symmetry, I'm just going to lay these beads east-west, so there's a little tiny X in the center that's left from that metal piece. So I'm aiming these from the X out to the dot, so they're straight across. Just like that. And then I think I will do, I'm going to do this in compass points because that's just the kind of person I am. I like my symmetry. And these beads just fit nicely in between the edge of this pattern where this starts and where this little X is. So it's working out really quite well. Of course, you can also pick through some of these. I guess they're called bugle beads, are shorter than others, so you can kind of dig around until you find one that works with what you want to do. So I've got the four gold in compass points, and now I've got these. They're clear, but they have kind of a silvery tint to them, and I think that that's going to be nice to go kind of in a star or a snowflake or however you want to picture it, but I want to find maybe some shorter ones. There we go. Because there's a circle, an embedded dot from here in the clay, and I kind of like the look of it, so I don't want to cover it up. So I'm going to try and find ones that will fit between the X in the center and the dot. I'm just going to use those. If it's longer than that, I will put it back and find another one. And here's a nice little short one. And here's a nice little short one. So that should do me quite well. So, push it down into the clay just so it sticks. Now I embed all sorts of beads and stuff and things. Um, I have on occasion picked the wrong kind of bead and had them melt. It wasn't pretty. Um, and in some cases I was trying to use those little gem thingies. Same, same thing, except the gems have the, like a metallic backing on it, almost like a tin foil or something. And it left that behind when it melted. So the piece was kind of ruined. <laughs> 